All right. Welcome back, guys. This is another episode of the Cairo Hustle podcast. Today I have uh, Dwayne Hoskins, um, been a part of the Cairo Hustle family now for five plus years. Um, yeah, right. <laughs> crazy man <laughs> producing content even though that people don't really understand like the big message behind content creation people think that it's just uh, to get like views but we we started this out to actually document the message of chiropractic so thank you for being a part of this team Dwayne um no problem, man it's 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 an honor it's a privilege it's a calling um you know you started out with the mission and the people that we've interviewed that are no longer with us you know, we have a permanent record of what they stood for, what what they what they believed, what they taught, what they shared with. Um, you know, so it, it 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 really is from somebody inside the profession. Uh, it's an honor to to work with somebody like you who has a passion for my profession bigger than some of my professional colleagues. <laughs> well, it's easy for me because I had one mission that was to create more interviews and content than anybody else ever did for chiropractic um hopefully more than bj palmer someday so you know we'll just keep on going right yeah he had quite a few, few recordings i mean he had a whole radio station so <laughs> you know his uh his podcasts back then were radio shows and his podcasts back then were the little um recordings on the wax discs he used to send out for to all the different radio stations for advertising and for health talks and stuff so yeah he's he's got a lot of stuff he put out that we don't even know about anymore but I think you're getting close. I mean, what, we're up to 597, we figured out. Yeah, we're at 597. 600, 600 <laughs> knocking on the door of 600. I mean, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, and, you, and you've, you worked 13 years. You worked with Rockstar uh, Chiropractic Podcast, and then you did a little work with Spinal Column Radio. Yeah, um, and uh, uh, for some reason, Jason Olsford and I got hooked up in uh, the membership practice with Tim Langley. Uh and uh, he and I started doing the Rockstar Chiropractic Project, and he had posters, and he was going to do videos, and he, you know all this stuff before blogging and vlogging was the thing. And our first show was we went up to New Beginnings in 2010, and we got to uh, do uh, a video interview with uh, Reggie Gold, and that ended up being his last video interview before he passed away. And we got to do a video interview with Irene Gold, and that's one of our very few video interviews. You've interviewed Irene on uh, not too long ago, last year. Yeah, she's year. A, she she's episode four hundred. Oh, okay, <laughs> two hundred episodes ago. So, um, you know, some of these, uh, it was it was just very interesting. And then, um, oh, I, I I feel really bad. I can't pull out his name, but the uh, the spinal column radio. Thomas he, Lamar. Uh, yeah, Thomas. He and his son. I mean, we had a great time. Uh, I filled in him for, for a week or two while they went on an extended vacation. And it was just a great time of listening to people that had a passion about recording and broadcasting what we do, why we do it, who we do it with um, for posterity because we recorded it and broadcast it. It was, just, it was just fun. And I was always told I had a good face for radio. And so... <laughs> You know, this video stuff is a, a little disconcerting, but, uh, you know, that's why you hide your face with facial hair. Hopefully nobody knows. <laughs> Too funny, Dwayne. Well, I, I really, uh, I, I'm thankful for you to be a part of the team. And I know you're doing a, a whole lot for the profession and uh, it's it's noticed. So thank you. Well, I appreciate that. Um, but, you know, it's uh, it's all in gratitude. I would not be alive today without chiropractic. My wife, Reminded, we just had our 35th wedding anniversary on Sunday. So Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, she reminded me that if she wouldn't have introduced me to the profession of chiropractic as an option, I would have gone into emergency medicine. And I probably would be dead by now with uh, my tendencies and my um, um, energy level and my proclivity to add on weight. And so, and she's quite right. Um and with, with chiropractic and living the proper lifestyle, um, I've, I'm a big guy and I'll never be small, but I'm not sick. I'm not unhealthy. I could be more fit and I'm working on that again and still, but, uh, you know, because of chiropractic, I am alive. I had a major accident last summer, actually the summer before last 
tore me up bad, and I would have probably died if I didn't have chiropractic. Just the physical damage that was done. And so I'm very thankful for the profession, and if I can give back to the profession at all, that's what I do. All of my businesses are wrapped around chiropractic. That's a beautiful story, man. I'm glad that you're recovered and you're doing well. You know, what, one of the, the things that – well, I'll jump into our big why, and then I'll, mm -hmm. I'll talk about a couple topics that we – uh, picked out which are sure. businesses that you work with in chiropractic, which are mm -hmm. Titronics, uh, Pure Cairo Notes. We'll let people know a lot about what you're doing, what's happening with those those products and brands. Right. We'll, we'll talk about podcasts. We'll talk a little bit about marketing. We'll talk about some things that might be working, some things that definitely aren't working. And uh, the old Gretzky quote: "Let's go where the puck is going." Hey, got to, got to be where it's yeah, got to be where it's going, not where it's at right now. Yeah. So the big why, why do we do what we do over here at Cairo Hustle? I'm sure Dwayne heard me say this like a thousand times at least at this point, maybe at about 600. But uh, we protect freedom of speech. And sometimes that's really a, like we, we gloss over these things. But freedom of speech is something that's under siege right now, specifically mm -hmm. in America. We need to go back to our basics again and find our basic freedoms that make us uh, unique and amazing. And that's uh, being able to speak what's on our mind and in our hearts. And our show does a, a fantastic job of that. So um, really proud of that. Protecting medical freedom, family health freedom, that's a chiropractic truth. Mm -hmm. Chiropractors stand in the gap and have kept us from medical tyranny, in my opinion, and has stopped the medical machine from turning us all into some type of dystopia. So I'm thankful for chiropractors being that that play in the, in this this world to keep families uh, safe and uh, giving people options for raising healthy families. So huge, 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 huge. And then you know, as I got to do the show more, I realized the way and what mattered even deeper, which was philosophy. Yes. And I realized that it was getting taken out of schools and it wasn't talked about as much at the chiropractic conferences. And there's all these medical like companies that are coming in and giving the continuing education to these state associations. Sure. And they weren't talking about green books. They weren't talking about BJ Palmer anymore. They weren't talking about Reggie gold. They weren't talking about Jim Sigafoos. They weren't yeah. talking about any of the greats. They were yeah. talking about rhetoric to push a product that wasn't chiropractic based. So I said, how do we take that narrative and give people something that's real deal chiropractic and I was like, well, I think the sacred trust is probably the most important piece for people to know. So if they don't listen to our show, mm -hmm. maybe they go and listen to find out what BJ Palmer's last words were, know the significance of chiropractic. Yep. Yep. And the, that, that sacred trust is the entirety of chiropractic that DD passed on to him and that he preserved at the green books and all of his research. And he passed that sacred trust. And if you think about what a trust is, it's a, it's a legal entity that preserves and protects what it contains in it uh, for the trustees to use and add to and use as a foundation to continue to build on. Um, at the ICA convention in Vegas, uh, I was asked, you know, what about this? Like, you know, to guard, we could either guard like Fort Knox, the gold of Fort Knox, where do you know if there's any gold there or not? No, because nobody's allowed to see it. Or do we guard it like the crown jewels? in uh, in London where everybody gets to see it you know so we we're supposed to guard it like the crown jewels we're supposed to show it off but we're also supposed to protect the integrity of it at the same time exactly yeah. and, and and when when you start to get philosophical mm -hmm. i i've also noticed that they started taking the language of chiropractic and removing it yeah, absolutely. Um, uh, I just finished my ACP paper and I, I, I make a very strong um, pl uh, plea in it. It's like, please, by all means, let's use our our vocabulary that's precious and, and specific to what we do. If we're a unique profession, we're licensed as a separate and distinct profession, we have our own vocabulary. Let's use it at all at all opportunities. But we also have to be careful that, you know, 1920s, 1930s, when most of the green books are written, uh, that vocabulary is different than what we have 100 years later. The words back there mean something. We need to do our due diligence in finding out what he meant and what they meant when they wrote those things. 
Um, we can't just take that word and translate it by what it means today. We need to find, and that's part of protecting and preserving the sacred trust. Well, yes, and do not <laughs> remove it. Right. From, do Absolutely. not remove it from the education of these schools that say that they're chiropractic colleges or chiropractic yeah. universities. Yeah. Like we have to have the fundamentals intact. Yeah, I. One of the things I asked when I when uh, Sherman asked me to come become dean of clinics was. Um, uh, you know, what, when are your philosophy classes? And uh, Joe D'Onofrio, the, the vice president of academic affairs, he goes, well, all of our classes are philo philo philosophy classes. Mm -hmm. I'm like, well, that is how it's supposed to be. How unique, right? <laughs> and then, you know, you have to, if you didn't go through Sherman, you had to sit in on the philosophy classes. And I got to be a part of some other classes. And it truly is, is you know, how does this cellular reproduction fit with the, the 33 principles where does it fit in that and so it's 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 refreshing to see it in action but you're absolutely right if we don't know why we're doing something why are we even doing it and I, i've noticed this too like we don't necessarily need the public to know what 33 principles are no and we don't need them to necessarily know what the sacred trust is correct we don't necessarily need them to know what subluxation centered chiropractic is we don't necessarily need them to understand what innate intelligence is and universal intelligence is. What we need the public to understand is that chiropractic is effective for their families. It's good for children. It's good for all walks of life. And that's the story brand I think we really need to focus on. And, and I agree with you to a point. But when you see multi-trillion dollar organizations spend millions of dollars in advertising to educate the public on what PED is and what pre-diabetes is and stuff, I think we shouldn't short sell the public in understanding what a vertebral subluxation is. Mm -hmm. And they can understand it. When I taught physics at undergrad level, um, I, I told them that, listen, you already are experiencing everything we're going to talk about. It's just a different language. When I tell, when I teach chiropractic to our, our 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 clients, it's like you already know this. We're just giving you the chiropractic name for what you already know. You know your body heals. We just call that innate intelligence. You know your your that that everything out there is trying to kill you. That's universal forces. You know these things. We just have a name for it within chiropractic, <laughs> and you know that happy brain is a really good place to be and a happy brain is normal. And all chiropractic does is re remove interference to get back to normal. In fact, you know, your hat, expect miracles. What is a miracle? What's a medical miracle, Jim? It's returning back to normal. Every miracle that has to do with body physiology, including the ones Jesus did, were returning the body back to normal function. That's, that's good. That if, when people get that, they get it. It's like, oh my goodness, I don't need drugs. I don't need surgery. I don't need all these other things because I just want a normal body. I want a happy brain. And then they get into why we have a separate and distinct vocabulary. So let's go back to the education model. For <laughs> <laughs> you got me going, brother. You got me going. <laughs> the education model. Yes. So when we made our first movie called Chiropractic the Documentary, we went over to Europe. We took it through a couple different locations over there. Mm -hmm. But one of the places I went was called uh, it was called the Anglo European Chiropractic College. Yes. And I went to Burnmouth and I took Luke over there. We toured through and I was going to give a talk before I went up. I'm sure you've heard me tell the story before. That's OK. But I, 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 I was perplexed because I'm not an educator. And at that point, I was a filmmaker, mm -hmm. and I had not started a podcast yet. And I wasn't even like really a speaker. And they gave me some guidelines that I, I had to follow. And they told me that, please don't talk about uh, subluxation at a chiropractic school. And I'm not telling them they're right or they're wrong. I was confused. Mm -hmm. And then they said, please don't talk about innate intelligence or universal intelligence. And I'm like, why is this like blasphemy? Why am I not allowed to have talks on things that are his 
historical references and context and lexicon of chiropractic and physiological realities so me being what behind the ears as a chiropractic advocate i said uh thanks for having me here today i've been asked to not talk to you guys tonight about subluxation and intelligence universal intelligence <laughs> <laughs> And I said, now that we got that out of the way. Yeah. <laughs> I've got about three minutes before they show up. <laughs> and that just, you know, when just the history, I mean, we're here to talk about a lot of things. I mean, we already decided what we're going to talk about, but you brought this up. When in the course of human events, you're trying and struggling to grow, grow the, a profession, there always has to be the financial growth as well. And when the chiropractic profession limits the chiropractor's ability to make massive amounts of money because it's lagging behind, the chiropractor will change what they say to make the money they think they, as much money as they think they can. And so by limiting those things that are new and attaching the uh, vocabulary to things that are old, which is the medical community, um, picking up the scraps that they've thrown away, um, the therapies that they've thrown away that they no longer use, they've gone on to bigger, better things. Um, it's like, okay, I can use that now. I can make a lot of money doing these things. I don't even have to be in the office. And it's like, but if I talk about innate, if I talk about universal, if I talk about subluxation, that is a very intimate interaction between the chiropractor and the client, the patient, the, 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 the member, the whatever term you want to use for them. And I have to be there and I have to invest my time, energy, and intention to affect that clearing of the subluxation so that they can be free from this dastardly thing that limits their connection with themselves and ultimately the connection to God, the universe, full expression of life. Somebody who's focused on money isn't going to get to that. And so, unfortunately, in the course of human events, these things happen. And I've seen since COVID, the, the public has turned. And I see a lot of chiropractors have turned. The ones that stuck by their guns, talked about subluxation, talked about universal, talked about innate, talked about happy brain syndrome, talked about doesn't matter what's going on in the metal community. You've got to have an intact nervous system to have a healthy immune system for whatever else you do. Those people grew during COVID. The ones that were practicing medicine under a, a chiropractic license struggled. And I, because because the public wants the truth and the public saw incongruency and they wanted something different and better. And that's what we have to offer. And as we've seen the past, now we're going into our fourth year of this. Mm -hmm. um, like, as we've seen all that happening, we've also seen a theme that I believe has been around since we've made our first movie, mm -hmm. which are the other medical communities are parceling off chiropractic messaging and chiropractic truth and chiropractic method and they're saying hey we'll just take a little bit of that yeah we'll, we'll, we'll make it ours now right well the biggest thing that came out in the last three or four years is dysautonomia which is an imbalance in the autonomic nervous system does that sound familiar that's <laughs> been around i mean that's chiropractic for the last 120 years there's an imbalance in the nervous system how it reacts to stimuli um resilience co Co blah, blah, coefficients and all these other things. I'm like, welcome to chiropractic. They want what we have. And those that, for whatever reason, don't want what we have, they're just grabbing at the scraps off the table that the medical community says, we don't want that because it doesn't work for us anymore. Well, e even if we take mainstream guys like Joe Dispenza, he's got one of the biggest movements in the world right now with his meditations. Mm -hmm. and his seminars he puts on. How many people know he's a chiropractor? You know? Yeah. And, <laughs> Gary Brecka, the guy with 10X Health Solutions, he was just interviewed by Joe Rogan. You know yeah. what he didn't say one time? 
Yep. I'm a chiropractor. Yep. Like there's definitely incongruency in the flag that people wave for the profession of chiropractic once they go a certain path. Yep. Yep. And it's, you know, I, I, I wish I had an answer for what everybody thinks and believes. I, being a chiropractor is part of my identity. Mm -hmm. It's not what it's it's based on, but it's part of who I am. Um, and I'm very proud to be a chiropractor. Um, As you and, should. Well, and then I'm pretty darn good at it, too. Um, so I'm, I don't I can't speak for anybody else. Um, but everybody who knows me knows I'm a chiropractor. <laughs> I love that about you. And that's that's one of the blessings of having you on the Cairo Hustle team is you, you, you always bring that up on the team meetings or when we have somebody new sampling out what we're doing. You're like, by the way, I'm the only chiropractor on the team and I make sure that the messages behind this product are strong. Yeah. And I don't mean that to slight you in any way. It's just uh, I, I hope because of who I am, um, the intention of that is to make sure we stay focused on what we say, freedom of speech, medical freedom and protecting, preserving, uh, promoting the, the sacred trust. Yeah. And I, I know that we're, we're getting deep into the, the interview here. So let's let's go into some things that you're working on sure. um, coming into the new year that will be relevant within 24 with Titronics and yeah. Pure Cairo Notes. Well, um, Titronics, we've uh, released our cloud software this last year, tweaked it, really refurbished it. Um, as with any software platform, the operating system's key. And with Microsoft changing, we're, we're going to get Windows 12 this next year. Um, the original Titronics was written in, in uh, Windows 7. Windows, <laughs> you know, it, it, it's it's old and it's antiquated and it's really not serviceable anymore. Still works. Um, it still could work, but we can't guarantee that the drivers are still going to work. We can't guarantee with the new chips that we've got in the scanners. If something breaks and we have to replace it, you know, the new technology requires new drivers and we can't. We just can't do that anymore. It's like trying to use an old Razor flip phone. You can probably get it to work, but <laughs> it really is not a useful tool anymore. And so getting everybody onto the cloud has been our major push this year. And uh, as of January 1st, uh, we, we don't support the old software. We just can't. 99% uh, of our problems with our tech calls have been with people's um, networking systems or computer operating system updates, things that have nothing to do with our software, but with our software can't work without them. And so uh, we've changed how we do that. But th the new software has got so many new things to it where it takes the guesswork out of determining what pattern is. It has analytics to tell you how, what's the number, uh, how congruent are you to the pattern you've, you've developed and identified? Um, how much percentage are you like that? And you can track that rather than graphical. Now it's numerical. Three or four levels that we've added to are looking to add a, a fifth and a sixth. Um, it's just it's just amazing. And it's all cloud-based. And so, you know, if something happens to your office, something happens, you haven't lost any data. We have it all. And it's just, it's just amazing. We've also got a range of motions coming out in the spring. I'm very excited about that. We can do a full cervical range of motion in about three minutes. And it's accurate to less than a degree. Um, the standard is plus or minus five degrees. And so it's extremely accurate, precise, reliable, repeatable, and it works with this software. So I'm excited about that too. We've had one out in the past. We've got we've got the technology. Uh, Chris and, and Roger have been working hard on it, and uh, they've been uh, getting the right components in the right place at the right time. And so we're ready to release that quarter one, hopefully. And uh, it, it works great. I mean, just just fantabulous. And it works with any joint complex in the body and all the, the standards are already in there. You just got to tell it which uh, joint you're assessing and it tells you how to do it, shows you pictures how to do it, gathers the data and gives you a report. And I'd say this as a salesperson uh, that even a lawyer can understand. Um, and so it's, it's just really cool. We're going with that. And um, we might be getting a thermal camera for screening. So you actually see the whole body and see all the changes, the dysautonomia, the, the, the imbalance in the thermal regulation. And so we can document it on a gross scale rather than, um, I don't want to say just paraspinally because that's physiologically the purest way that, that's been found um, to measure the autonomic balance. 
but just grossly overall how, how to do that. So we're excited about the potential of that as well. So that's where we're ahead of Titronics. Um, well, so growing, me, and expanding, and supporting, and it's just it's just been awesome. Let me jump in quickly and. Sure. For people that are not familiar with Titronics, it's a way for people to scan the nervous system through surface EMG. And no, no? Thermography. 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 And it gives a temperature reading, right? If there's inflammation? No. Okay. So let me let me back up here. The physiology is this. Um, the, the on each side of the spinous process, which is the bumps up and down your spine, there's these pockets of capillary beds. And the capillary beds, their only function is to get rid of heat generated by the spinal cord. That's operated um, by the sympathetic nervous system, and it's controlled by that level of the spinal cord. So as the spinal cord does work, it generates heat, and that needs to be gotten rid of. Ideally, in an ideal normal situation, you're going to have balanced emission of heat. So what we're looking for is how balanced is this handling of the heat when we measure the temperature so we find areas of large imbalance or areas that no matter what's going on no matter when i scan you it's always the same that's stuck and stuck is not good and that's what we call pattern so it's measuring a direct result of the function of the autonomic nervous system specifically the sympathetics so it's very, very tight. There's very few variables in it. B.J. Palmer, uh, when he patented this in 1926, it's almost 100 years ago, he said this is the closest thing you can get to his multi-million dollar machine called the electroencephaloneuromontempograph. And so, and that's a whole other story beyond that, but it, it, it tells the chiropractor very reliably, very specifically, uh, very accurately, is there balance and the body's ability to regulate a core function that you can't affect any other way. So that, that makes sense, or is that too much? Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm tracking you. So yeah. for for somebody that might be watching this and mm -hmm. they're like, why doesn't every chiropractor use one of those? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, well, it's like saying, why wouldn't every chiropractor use an X-ray? Right, and um, you know, different techniques determine subluxation different ways. Um, this is an objective, non-invasive way of taking your temperature to get some basic information, and over time we can develop we can develop pattern. Um, it you can practice chiropractic without any tools, without X-ray, without anything. Uh, they did that before these things were invented, right? Mm -hmm. You know, X-ray wasn't adopted until uh, 1915. Thermography wasn't. Uh, invented in the chiropractic field in 1926. You know, what did they do before then? They detected, located, analyzed, and still helped the body correct the vertebral subluxation. This just adds a level of assessment which um, that's, a, that's objective that allows the doctor to have increased certainty in what they're doing and to do a post-check to make sure that what they did actually affected the subluxation in the nervous system. And so that's how we use the tool. Um, other chiropractors have different ways of doing it. Some uh, do leg checks, some do a multitude of things, but that's just that we have a tool that uh, objectively can, can tell you. Yeah. I, I, the whole time you've been talking about this, I'm like, it kind of reminds me of like when you're, you have to a checked engine light on your car and you want to go get the code and then you figure out what you have to do in order to like fix that checked engine light on your your vehicle and then you fix it and then you check it again and, and the code's clear yeah pretty simple yeah. and you keep the tool and you check it every time <laughs> sometimes those codes i mean to continue with the analogy sometimes those codes accumulate and they don't trip that light until something major happens would you rather keep them clear on a regular basis or would you rather wait until something breaks and the light comes on? Yeah. Well, I call it a dummy light for a reason. And don't put black duct tape on it. <laughs> <laughs> I've driven many cars that way. <laughs> or electrical tape, I think it is, not duct yep, tape. Black electrical tape, yep. No, don't do that. No, don't um, do that. Pure Cairo notes. I yeah. know that it's a 
maybe I'll get this one right. Uh, it's a note system that's for membership style, cash style practices that doesn't do anything with insurance. Correct. Correct. And there's a reason for that. It's not that I don't know insurance. When I was at Logan before I graduated, I actually taught a insurance protocol course to my classmates and set the, the curriculum for, I don't know if they still teach it now, but for the last, for 10 years after I left, they taught my curriculum. So it's not that I don't know insurance. I came to the realization that the codes that insurance have, first of all, they're owned and patented or owned and copyrighted by the AMA and the WHO. Um, two organizations that don't really represent me. Um, second of all, the codes that we as chiropractors have used are what are called not otherwise specified, NOS. And if you look at the codes, the current ones are M99.1X or .0X, depending on which one you use. Those are at the end of the musculoskeletal listings, M99. After that goes the N numbers, which are neurological. So it's like everything else that medicine can think about. It's like, well, let's do not otherwise spe specialized N99.0 is uh, uh, somatic dysfunction. N99.1 is a chiropractic vertebral subluxation, or not even, don't call it that, but chiropractic something or other. So when I looked at what the actual definition of these terms mean, it doesn't describe what I find and what I do. And so how can I, how can I reconcile that with putting down something that I don't believe I'm doing to get paid for? That's called fraud. Not saying that anybody else does it is, but for me, it became fraud. And then when I do it over the telephone line or over the internet, it becomes wire fraud. Um, and then it becomes insurance fraud because I'm getting money from an insurance company for something I don't believe I'm doing. Let me look at the procedure codes. They're 989, 401, 2, and 3. Um, those are for man spinal manipulation of one or two, three or four, or five regions. And so um, I don't do manipulation. Um, and it just doesn't fit with what I do. So how can I use them? And so I've chosen for me to do cash practice, membership practice, box on the wall practice. And I don't code because there's no coding out there that fits with what I do. And that's a personal decision. Um, again, freedom of speech. This is what I believe. You can do what you want. Practice the way you want. Be congruent with what you say. Don't say one thing and do something else. That's not okay. Preach. Practice. Preach. The same thing. And uh, then, uh, you know, if you, you can build insurance that way if you want. I choose not to. And... I couldn't find a software solution for me. Um, I was building a brand new practice. It's like I could either spend eight, ten thousand dollars on shelving and folders and printers and folders and paper and ink and all this stuff, <laughs> or I can build an app. And so we built an app, um, let my friends at the membership community know about it. And they're like, hey, can we sign on to it? Made it a membership back, uh, a membership subscription service, software as a service. Um, we're on our third iteration and uh, making it bigger and better. Uh, we're adding things that um, never wanted to add. Uh, scheduling for one thing. Like you and I had a, an appointment today, yes? Mm -hmm. Were either one of us on time? No. no. Things happen, right? Mm -hmm. So it's good to know I needed to be here for this appointment. Um, <laughs> I show up early, get things ready. Uh, it, it, it's okay. But when people come in the office, um, you know, they usually sign in, right? They check in. And everybody I know in an office goes off the check-in sheet. They don't go off the appointment book. So if Mary's down at 11.30 and she shows up at 10.30 and Joe shows up at 10.45 for his 10.45 appointment, who's going in first? Mary, because she got there first. <laughs> right? Am I right or am I right? You're right. So I'm like, okay, yeah, you can, you can have an appointment. But so anyway, we're dealing with those things. For me, I'm dealing with those to satisfy my customers' desires and needs. And so we're working on, on getting that involved, uh, forms involved, uh, doing the other practice um, management, uh, business support, not practice management, business support, practice business support stuff. So managing your social media, managing communications, uh, 
managing uh, some of the accounting side of things, doing those things so that this one software can pro provide support for this type of practice in a way that's congruent with this type of practice. And so that's that's what I created, and that's where we're at. We're 12 years into it now, and uh, lo looking forward for some massive growth this year. I mean, I'm a big fan. I yeah. think that what you do actually promotes and gives legitimate um, foundation for chiropractic as a service provider. And I know why people get misconstrued and they call it chiropractic medicine yep. because they're actually doing chiropractic medical codes. Mm -hmm. So there's a reason why the public's confused and the practitioner's confused because they are actually billing out for manipulation and not for chiropractic adjustment or spinal correction or whatever the vitalistic approach to chiropractic promotes. And, and they're getting reimbursed from a medical insurance company for their medical benefits. Which we'll say is not chiropractic. No separate and distinct either we are or we aren't choose yeah that that's that's definitely the uh cornerstone of why we have such congruency together Dwayne. is we always want to promote um the profession in its best light mm -hmm. and we want to protect and support the practitioners the best we know how to even though we might not be able to do it for everyone right. and it's important for us to keep our standards for what Absolutely. we talk about and what we produce and how you uh, practice. And a lot of chiropractors are out there looking for solutions to say, look, I'm tired of being a part of that system. Well, let me share some with you. Um, in almost every state, there's a, there's a state association mm -hmm. that um, stands for what you, you want. Oh, that's, oh, hey, look, I was chiropractor of the year. Not that I showed you for that, but um, there's a state association that helps you accomplish that too. So it's not just businesses like mine. There are state associations and international associations, IFCO, ICA, um, that help you do practice like it was meant to be. Well, you know me. This past year, I've gone full speed ahead promoting state associations yep. and getting people to support financially and become members and to see the big idea and see the big picture of being a contributor mm -hmm. um, because – organizations that are congruent with your practice style you gotta support them you gotta be a member of right and and you don't know what's going on behind the scenes like i spend i'm the executive director for the palmetto state chiropractic association or an ifco affiliate um, i spend a full day once a quarter down at the state house look watching my board of examiners carry out their business they know who I am. A couple of my friends, a couple of my members or association, and they know why I'm there because I call them out. It's like, why did you let that person call us chiropractic medicine? Why did you Why did you let that go? Why Why was that even part of uh, allowed? It's like, excuse me, ma'am, uh, that's not an acceptable term. It's not anywhere in our acceptable terms list of what we're called. We're called chiropractors or doctors of chiropractic, not doctors of chiropractic medicine. There is no profession recognized part of the, the state of South Carolina called chiropractic medicine. Please don't use that again because we don't know what you're talking about. So I bring that up. I mean, that's but every executive director should be doing that. Your association has somebody that should be doing that. And that's where your dues goes because I'm missing a day of practice. Well, we, we definitely need to have a roundup of all the executive directors and give them some coaching. <laughs> <laughs> but, well, and, and the ones that I know, Sarah Sully and Kat, and uh, there's a few in the Northeast and a few in the, and then they're in the in New Mexico. I mean, we have a, um, a group that we're constantly in contact with each other to give a heads up um, because the coordinated attacks against us are very well coordinated and very clandestine. And so when something happens in Florida, everybody else is aware of it and we can pitch in and send the the legislatures even in florida are concerned about um what their neighbors are thinking and so it, it's made some differences it really has in stopping some of these clandestine attacks but if we don't have members paying dues and 
back to our original message this protects the sacred trust absolutely protects defends preserves it promotes it amen um is there anything that you think that we should touch on before we call it a night um no um well yeah i mean i i've noticed a, a difference in the general population how they think about chiropractic from before COVID until now um they've been lied to they've been cheated they've been stolen from they've been manipulated in a non-chiropractic in an evil way and they know it they know it deep down inside um and they're much more aware of who's telling them what and where that authority comes from uh, i have the privilege and i count it a privilege i actually see chiropractic clients at a medical clinic downtown Spartanburg. And I love the upstate of South Carolina. It's a beautiful place, a lot of beautiful people. I love what I do and I love where I do it. But I get to see the people that nobody else wants to touch in a medical setting. And everybody there understands what I do and what I don't do. Uh, I only deliver chiropractic and I only um, do chiropractic things. I don't even do vitals. That's a medical thing that they take care of. Um, and so they don't want to do my job. They have enough stuff. I watch them. The 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 the, osteo, the the doctors up, the DOs, the MDs, the nurse practitioners, the physicians assistants, the nurses are so wrapped up in cleaning up their own messes, diabetes, addictions, uh, uh, opioid addictions, and all this other stuff that's that's medical they're so busy doing that they don't even want to comprehend what i do um and that's it he's like go see the chiropractor go see the chiropractor go see the chiropractor a lot of them have become clients and now they understand more what i do and what i don't do and funny enough um part of the protocol where i am now is if you come in for uh breast reduction you have to see me five times to make sure your spine is correct before you can go through a surgical consult. So they've even implemented me understanding that I have to do with posture. Everything has changed with this COVID. Everybody is looking at health and vitality and um, survivability and resilience in a different way. And we have a bigger, stronger voice. The problem is, is we're still speaking in pre-COVID terms from a pre-COVID lower authority level if you will we have much more authority in the community people want to hear the truth they want to hear today the same message i was saying pre-covid is the only way to have a good immune system is to have a clear nervous system that never changed i've been saying that for 20 years during COVID, i was like whether you believe the vaccine is real or not whether it's poison or not whether it helps or not it only works if you have a good immune system. And the only way you have a good immune system is to have a clear nervous system. That message never changed. And those people that know me know that I have integrity because no matter what came at us, my message didn't change because I wasn't chasing symptoms. I was working on core human physiology. And, back and that, to, back that's to what the, we need to get back to. Back to the core human. Yeah. The people that you're seeing and other chiropractors are seeing over the past three, four years now, those people are adulterated. They have shame. They have guilt. They have fear. They have isolation. They have depression. They have anxiety. They're pissed. Mm -hmm. They are pissed that they've been sold a, a foul message that has their bodies to the point where now they're dealing with the downstream direct effects of what they were medically recommended by a system that did not care about them. And that's the thing about chiropractic. And I'm not trying to tell anybody that watches this, that the people in that medical world want to hurt people. They were misled too. Yeah. The individuals and, don't the organ, the, the industry is well, who's at fault, but there's a lot of sh shame and guilt out there for the person that like actually used that product. And right. And they, they're like, really like, they're scared now. They're scared right. to go back into that, that same system because they know their loved ones are sick now. They know that 
you know, they've seen people having, you know, cardiac issues. They've seen people having, you know, multiple different, I, I don't even know. I can't Stroke. even tell you. Yeah, Stroke. strokes. You know, uh, uh, Matt McCoy just put out a notice like, listen, guys, strokes are on the rise and you know why. So you got to even be more careful now in the chiropractic realm than we ever have before. We were never the real cause of stroke to begin with, and we still aren't, but it's becoming much, much more prevalent that people are having strokes that we got to be super aware now. And that's just it is like the correlation between like somebody having uh, an effect stroke from some type of pharmacological product that they've been abusing or using or took mm -hmm. and then saying, hey, this is a chiropractic thing. Mm -hmm. Like what a scapegoat moment for them. Yep. yep, yep, yep. Now, what's the answer to all that? All that fear and shame and guilt. What's the answer? It's on your shirt. Be principled. The DE principles of give, love, and serve with no expectation, with no uh, shame, with no prejudice, with no reserve. The only way we can overcome this is do what chiropractors have always done. Give, love, serve. For the sake of giving, loving, and serving. Expecting nothing in return. Only way. <laughs> Understanding that miracles are going to happen, so we should expect them. Amen. So I'm sure people want to know more about uh, Titronics, Pure Cairo Notes. Um, where do we send them to? And, and how Titronics, can we... Yeah, Titronics.com. Um, here live, we're at the end of 2023. We've got an end of year special. So make sure you contact me through the website, Titronics.com. You're going to see it everywhere because we've been part of the sponsorship of this podcast series for two or three years now. Uh, PureCairoNotes.com. Um, and if you do uh, PureCairoNotes.com, Cairo Hustle, there's going to be three months free to get you going. No no setup charge. Uh, come and try it out. There's always a free demo, two-week demo. But if you're serious about it and want to get started, we'll give you three months free. When this airs again in the fall, we determine what September twenty fifth. I know, right? September nineteenth. Nineteenth. Um, <laughs> hey, you know that's chiropractic's birthday almost. It is. So the the offer is still be good then. So when this is live now, when you watch it in two or three months on Facebook, when you watch it when it comes out as a podcast in September or any time down the road, purechironotes dot com slash Cairo Hustle will make sure you get that that special then as well. And then, uh, you know, if you need help finding a good state association, uh, please email me, doshoskins at gmail, um, or you could go to PSCA1895 at gmail.com. That's the PSCA. And uh, I'll be happy to help you find a really good state association. I know that Georgia and South Carolina and Florida have out of state memberships. So if you can't, if you're close and you can't get those, more than happy to help you get connected with a group of people that think like you so that we can be more um, stable and more convinced and more concrete and more strong in what we believe and how we believe it. Organized. Organized. Yes. Well, Dr. Dwayne Hoskins, you're episode 597 of the Kyra Hustle podcast. Thanks for being our guest tonight. I love you, man. Thank you. you know, BJ you says, too. well, I love you, period. But I love everyone's listening because, like BJ said, I love you because you love the thing I love, which is chiropractic. Amen. Well, you guys are just one story away. Keep hustling. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Dwayne, have a great night out there in South Carolina. Love you, man. All right. Bye for now.